The member from Tennessee, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. It's always an honor to rise in the House and today and respond to the member from Chatham, Kent, Leamington, who I quite enjoy uh, discussing issues with. And I'd like to read the, the motion in the House first. That in the opinion of this, this House, the Government of Canada should take immediate steps to eliminate the carbon tax on grocery items. Now, I, I have to echo the member from Waterloo that the motion, quite frankly, as written, doesn't make sense because there is no direct carbon tax on grocery items. Now, I listened very intently to the member when he presented the when he made his presentation, and what he was actually talking about was the cumulative effect of of the input costs of the carbon tax on the ultimate on the end on the end price of groceries. I think that's what he was trying to say. But that's not what the motion says. There is no carbon tax on groceries. So <laughs> I have no problem voting for this, but it doesn't make much sense. Honestly, like there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of uh, horsepower put in this. So, but let, let's think back and, and things we can agree on here. Okay, now the reason there's a price on carbon or a, 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 a or the reason there's some kind of regimen on carbon is that the use of fossil fuels is impacting climate change. Global warming. Can we all agree on global warming? Because there are a few people, and not, I'm not saying people in the House, but I've heard a few people who even disagree that the, the, the world is actually a globe, that it's not round, it's flat. <laughs> so let's all agree that the world is round and it's being impacted by what happens is we've, we've, over millions of years, we've used a lot of um, the leftovers from dinosaurs, from, from plants and animals have turned to carbon and, or turned to oil, and we've burned it all in 100 years and it's impacting our climate. So forward-thinking countries are looking for ways to um, use less carbon. We hear a lot about electric cars. We talk a lot about electric cars, right? And that's one of the reasons we're trying to get rid of the use of carbon. So, but if you don't go back that far, I was here when, and I don't agree with everything the former Liberal government did. Nope. Disagreed with a lot of it. Yep. But when the Ford government got elected, there was a cap and trade system in the province of Ontario. Ontario. Actually, it was done with Quebec. Did you know that the federal carbon tax doesn't apply in Quebec? Yeah. It doesn't apply because they came up with their own system. program to try to make the residents, help the residents use less carbon. And Ontario had that chance as well. The federal carbon tax is a backstop. If you can't think of anything else to do, you get the federal carbon tax. So the Ford government <laughs> didn't really know the difference between a cap and trade or a carbon tax. They all put it under one, you know, one umbrella and they canceled the cap and trade. But have no fear, folks. Have no fear, the government, the government, the Ford government, I think at one time they, were, they called themselves the greatest government ever known to the people. Yep. <laughs> they knew how to deal with the carbon tax. Gas pump stickers. <laughs> the, first, the, the first line of defense against the carbon tax, gas pump stickers. stickers. But now, <laughs> and at cabinet, you know, if that doesn't work, if that doesn't work, we're going to go to court. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they did. And they lost. Spent millions challenging the federal government whether they had the right to implement a carbon tax. And they did. And they lost. Yep. For sure they did. And the stickers didn't stick. And they lost. Yep. The stickers didn't stick. And they still didn't realize 
that the federal carbon tax is a backstop program. So you could come up, a government, provincial government, can come up with their own program to try and lessen the use of fossil fuel so you lessen the impact of burning carbon and, and eliminate the need for the feds to use the carbon tax. You can still do that. And perhaps if you put some horsepower into it, you could make that, that program work. But that's not what you're choosing to do. And what's, what's really sad about that, and I listened very closely to the member from Mississauga. Yeah, and, and actually a lot of, a lot of the, the uh, things she brought forward are very important points. The food bank use in Ontario is skyrocketing. Children. Children are It's hungry. skyrocketing. Seniors. Food prices in Ontario are going up. There are a lot of people in this province right now who have to choose what they, like, and make serious choices. Not, you know, like, you know, what, but, but serious choices. And she made a very good case of that. But this motion isn't a serious option. No. It isn't. Come up, use your, in the time you have left, think about the things that you have been doing or could be doing to lessen the use of carbon and try and make that into a program that exempts Ontario from the carbon tax. Right. But you don't want to do that. You seem to be more intent for campaigning for Pierre Polyev than actually working for the people of Ontario. I heard ax the tax. That, that's, that's a federal Pierre Polyev thing. Yeah, so pathetic. No, you have the power in the province of Ontario to actually do things. So, and I'll, the member from Waterloo also brought this up. There is a provincial carbon tax. There sure is. On manufacturers, on, and it applies to food processing facilities, to bakeries, mm -hmm. meat packing plants. You know, so if you want to have an immediate impact, you want to have an immediate <laughs> impact, a provincial carbon tax holiday on food processing plants as long as that saving gets passed through to consumers. Man, we, 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 man, you could do that actually and make a huge difference very quickly. And you, and you can do that right from this legislature, not simply just pointing at the next level of government. I'm getting a bit worked up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna calm down a bit. It reminds me of a story I was once told. How, have you ever heard, Speaker, that there's, there's a custom in some governments that when a government loses power, the head of the government, premier, prime minister, leaves, president, leaves three envelopes for the next premier, prime minister, president. And when they really get in trouble, the advice is you open an envelope. So the government gets in a lot of trouble and they open and you know, and the, and the, the leader of the day opens another envelope and the advice is blame the previous government. Right now we've heard that. Right? Oh, we've been on that road many times. <laughs> I, I, was, I was talking to the, I gotta say, I was talking to the former house leader for the Wynn government and it was, it was a great conversation. Mr. Malloy, who I respect. And he asked me, and I hope he doesn't get angry for me, for, but he asked me, he said, John, you were here when, when, when I was the house there. I said, yeah. He said, were we that bad? I said, what do you mean? He says, did, did we actually do nothing in 15 years, <laughs> like the government said? I said, John, that's not actually true. You did 
absolutely nothing like they did. <laughs> he laughed as well. He laughed. He laughed as well. So anyway, they open the envelope, they blame the previous government, and, and this government's really good at blaming the previous government. Sure is. That's all they do. And then they get in trouble again. Again. And you know what? I would say that right now, the current government has got a few problems. Just a couple. <laughs> has got a few problems, you know? On the bus. RCMP, <laughs> Greenbelt, you know, special prosecutors. Man, I didn't even hear words like that with the liberals. So, <laughs> they got a few problems. So, they're opening up the, the envelope. second envelope. <laughs> the second envelope. They open it up, and you know what it says? Blame another level of government. Oh. And that's what this motion is. This motion is part of the second envelope. Blame it on the feds. Do the feds have things that they should work on? Absolutely. But there's things that we can work on, that you can work on right now, that will actually make a difference on people's grocery bills right now, that you have the power to do. Because if you don't, at some point, you're going to have to open up the third, the third envelope, Speaker. <laughs> do you know what the third envelope you're says? Tell us, John. I do. Do you know what the third envelope says, Speaker? It says, prepare three envelopes. <laughs> Liberals in it. No <laughs> <laughs> one's laughing because he was part of it. <laughs> and, that, and that, Speaker, is where we are. So, I don't want to make light. I don't want to make light of the subject matter. I'm making light of the motion itself. The subject matter is extremely serious. The fact that people in this province can't afford, many of them can't afford to eat, can't afford the rent, can't afford many cases to live. I'm from Northern Ontario. Everything is more expensive where I'm from. Everything. And there is no public transport. So regardless of how little you make, you need a car. So I know. So I'm not making fun of the... I'm making fun of the government that they seem content to try and play political games instead of actually right. looking at what they could do. Right. Looking at what they could do. And I'm being serious about the industrial carbon tax. Why don't you, if you're serious about making food cheaper in this province, take the industrial carbon tax that food processors have to pay now to the province, because the province does have a carbon pricing scheme yes for manufacturers and processors. They have it, they put it in, and they're getting big bucks for it, from it. Billions. They could make a holiday for food processors, provided that's put through. You know what? Immediate, immediate relief. Immediate. But they don't, and hopefully some of the members will talk about that, but I haven't heard anything yet about what they could do. Something else that the province could do is, yes, look into price fixing with the major retailers. Because retail is controlled by three or four major companies. And that is a big part of the bottleneck in food process, pricing. The bottleneck isn't at the farm level been a farmer my whole life and it's actually I've gone for 15 minutes without mentioning cows but, I, but I've been a cow farmer my whole life it's not there and it's not even at the processing level because you talk to processors in any you talk 
you talk to processors, whether they're milk processors, beef processors, it's not, they're not the issue either. But it's the major retailers who call the shots because they have all the power. So, and the major retailers have done this before. <laughs> Price fixing on bread. It's not a new concept. So why isn't the government looking at that? Why isn't the provincial government pushing for a grocery code of conduct so that consumers can be sure that they're paying the actual cost? And should retailers make a profit selling food? Yes. Not against, but should they be able, be able to gouge because of their monopoly? No. no. And that's where the government should come in. I don't hear anything about that. Heads are down over there. Yeah, that's, so there are things, there are things that we could do. But we choose, no, not we. You choose. You choose. The Ford government chooses not to act. You know where the food government, Ford government did choose to act? They did choose to try and gobble up the green belt. They did choose to take Hamilton boundaries, Guelph boundaries, to, to take farmland to supposedly build housing that they already had land for. Did you know that even without the green belt grab, we lose 319 acres of farmland every day in this province? Now, you think that food prices are high now? Just wait. Because remember I started this speech about climate change? Well, climate change is going to have an impact on our food prices big time. Because there's going to be big parts of the world that now grow food that are going to be able to grow less. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe not at all. But you know what? In spe specifically in Southern Ontario, I'm from Northern Ontario, proud to farm there and it's a great place to farm. But the land in Northern Ontario is not equivalent to the land here. Yeah. It isn't. And why? It's not just the land, but here we're surrounded by the Great Lakes. We have climactic conditions. We have the best climate to grow, the 200 various crops we grow in the world, in the world, Speaker. It's a gift. It's a gift. And the Ford government chooses to stand idly by, not even stand idly by, to actually increase the process, to actually they want to eat up more land. They want to eat up more land. You know, and, and on the Green Belt, I listened, I believe it was the member from Perth Waterloo yesterday. Perth, Wellington, Wellington, pardon me, to the member from Waterloo. And he was talking about, uh, um, what was his private man? Oh, he was responding to our housing motion yesterday. And he said that there was a housing project in his riding and it was stopped by NIMBYs. And the government, the government stepped in and eliminated the NIMBY problem. And then I kind of heckled, yeah, that's when the, the RCMP had to step in. <laughs> like, you know, please, I urge you, I urge you, you have a majority, actually do things for the right reasons. So look at the industrial carbon tax, look at that. Look at trying to make a carbon tax system, no, a carbon, ta a carbon pricing scheme that, you won't have, that we won't have to be under the yoke of the federal one. You should be able to do that. Quebec, you're the, the member across, you're right in the border, Quebec. Yeah, you're right in the border. They don't pay a carbon tax. Your folks do. You're in the government. Fix it. Fix it. How come Quebec doesn't pay a carbon tax and you do? That's a good question. 
were on the same program. <laughs> we, we, we were on the same program. We were on the same program. And there's things that could have been done better with the carbon pricing, with the cap and trade. I'm not saying there couldn't. But the reason we have it is because you scrapped it and we have no alternative. Thank you, Speaker.